finally, it's decorating day. We, first of all, we needed to choose the colour of paint, so we did a little bit of tester potting and we did some mock-ups on Photoshop and I'll show you that now. So we're in the process of picking these paints and it's just taking forever. Uh, there's just, there's obviously a lot of colours available and it's pretty tough when you haven't got much to compare to uh, in the house because we haven't used any other greys yet. So this one is polished pebble, it's a Dulux paint straight off the shelf, ready, ready mix, you know it's uh, one of their main, main line paints. This is also a Dulux one and it's called Chic Shadow. Um, liking both of those, this is another few greys, uh, again Dulux and we quite like that middle one there. This is a little bit on the dark side. What well, sound like Star Wars then? Um, we moved away from Dulux and we're going to go back to the Earthborn paints. They are much more breathable and uh, I don't know, they just tend to kind of give a more period sort of traditional look to the wall because uh, they're completely flat, they're very chalky in finish and uh, they're nice to work with, they're all natural. We come back to the Earthborn paint which we've used in the bathroom and fell in love with it back then. And basically we're just using the kind of Dulux ones as a bit of a mid, mid ground guide. So I'm going to show you how I've mocked up a couple of the colours that we've narrowed it down to uh, on the computer. And this is really, really rough way of doing it. The plaster is not even dry. The photo is off an iPhone. There's no woodwork up. But it's, if we kind of just throw it all together, we're going to get a better idea than just kind of holding up a little swatch to the wall. Okay, there'll be all sorts of distortions here on the screen because um, I'm filming it with the camera, but it's as good as it's going to get today. So this is a rough photo of the hallway on an iPhone and obviously we've got no architraves on there yet, so it's a really crude way of kind of mocking it up. This is the cat's cradle colour. So what I've done is just taken a swatch off the website and dropped it in to the wall area and I've mocked up some white for the ceiling and for the architraves and woodwork. That's just to block it in to give me some idea of how it will work against the white. So that is, like I said, the cat's cradle. So that's my warm option. If I just make another layer on top of that. Uh, and I'm going to drop in the other grey, which is a slightly greeny grey so that we can then have a quick look. So that's the cat's cradle, which is this swatch here. The other swatch is Tuffet, which is a kind of a greeny gray, I'd say, slightly darker. So that's cat's cradle, and that's Tuffet. So Joe's also keen to bring some of the colors out of those tiles in the floor, and there is a bluey uh, tile there, which also will match up far more with the, uh, the greeny gray, the bluey gray, than uh, that dusky one. Ah, photos. What do you think it's going to be? Photos. Photos? Yeah. Might be. Ooh, what's that? Do you want a circle? Better. Oh, what is it? Heavy. Not photos. Not photos? What is it then? Paint. Look at all this. Um, um, oh. It's like Christmas already. And this, this uh, stranger is Jo. She's been behind the scenes for the past few months. Really? Just producing a baby? Yeah, keeping busy, doing all the, the hard work. So, Joe's back in because she's the painting expert. This really thick, lovely paint, so it needs a good stir. That looks good enough to smooth out my plastering. And Joe's just miscoating that final little bit of plaster which we were waiting to dry. And then we can get going on the top coat.
We're doing it right now. We are about two thirds of the way through the first coach, finished downstairs and making our way around the landing. It's going on really well. I think we may just run out on the second coat, um, but we'll have to see how we go. I'm doing the cutting in, Joe's rolling and doing that far end, and we're not doing too badly. It's taking a little while to kind of change to its final colour. Uh, it's drying a fair bit lighter than as it goes on. It's kind of less of the kind of lavendery purple look and more grey, which is great. Great, great. For this aluminium box, there's no bend in it at all, but it really is a bit too long for indoors or in confined spaces anyway. I managed to pull a bit of a late one last night getting my business work out of the way so I can spend a few daylight hours on the hall this morning because uh, just the evenings are just so dark and gloomy it's just not that easy to work going in and out from the workshop. Today's first problem is these radiator pipes and they couldn't be more awkward. If you look there, they come through the solid brick wall on a curve. I'm hoping there's enough ever straight there that we can cap it. The only other option is to start taking up our floor in the other room which we've restored and under that it's got an airtight membrane and then it's got the insulation and the netting and it really would have to be a last resort if I was going under there. We're not replacing with the radiator um, but of course I've got to fit the architrave exactly where these are going because it's thick architrave and the skirting and there's simply no room there even if I cleaned it up and found it was straight enough there's no room there for a push fit or compression or anything like that. So that's the first problem, because I can't really put any architrave or anything on, so you can see how close they are to the door linings. I haven't got around to getting any kit and teaching myself to solder yet. If you remember last year, uh, Jason, who fitted our wood burner over here, uh, he's a plumber and, and gas boiler installer, so he is the man when it comes to sorting out soldering and he said that he might be free late this morning. What I'm going to do is just go and drain everything down so it's ready and then I've nipped out and got two end feed uh, 15 mil caps and I'm hoping that the pipes are going to be clean and straight enough that we can cap them off. So a bit of a long-winded job to start the day off but if we go and drain all that down now hopefully the actual soldering will be pretty quick and then I can start on the carpentry and get all these architraves up. Spanner in the kitchen, that's where everyone keeps their spanners, I'm sure. Right, down to the cellar we go. I'm sure some of you have seen this in the kitchen, Renault, already. This is the secret entrance to our cellar. So it kind of meant that we had extra bit of work top. It used to be a full height door here, so that's our little bit of ingenious planning. Make sure we've got enough of this hose. Let's clip these pipes up in here. Oh, 
gonna have to feed this out onto the lane because knowing the ducks they'll be paddling and drinking it. I'm pretty sure that radiator inhibitor is probably not good for ducks. Alright so I checked there's no kinks so that should all work now. So I need to go and open up all the radiators, all 22 of them. That took far too long. Kept on getting like an air block in that hose and I don't know, it just took forever. Um, but it is all drained down now, I hope. So um, this valve here, I've just opened up and you can see there's just a couple of drips coming out. So hopefully that means everything's drained. So we did drag the painting out over kind of a week or two, just doing it when we could. Um, but it's all done now, I'm really happy with the colour. We did struggle a little bit with the paint. Um, it, it is a really great paint, but it dries so fast, uh, and it is so thick that if you don't get it on perfectly, it kind of uh, leaves you with a slightly textured surface. So we've ended up rubbing it down and giving it a good second coat. Um, a really short pile roller I think is the only way to to avoid that as soon as you use like a, a normal medium pile roller you end up with a bit of a, a kind of textured effect which is not good whereas when we've used it on stonework that's not been noticeable because it's just been a, a, a rough surface anyway so I've made a start on some of the woodwork downstairs so the architraves and the skirting um, but I'm going to be doing that this weekend up in the up on the landing so I've got another five doors to do and everything up here so the next video will be all of that going in and I'll kind of show and explain how I'm doing that so slowly getting there even got a couple of photos up on the wall uh, and a few things to hang downstairs so we're kind of making it look a little bit more like home but it's getting me really excited about the next stage which will be when all that's finished when we start looking at the staircase itself you know getting rid of all this horrible metal work that shouldn't be here and should never have been put in here um, and we can start kind of looking at that and, and taking the staircase back to a really nice period uh, period look. And I did get the radiator tails from that old radiator cut and capped, which meant that I could um, get that board, that skirting board and architrave on. So I've done that. Um, it was tight, but we did, ma you know, um, we did manage to get those end caps soldered on nice and neat, uh, as far in as possible. So that's just one like other thing that was really kind of getting in the way, out of the way. So the next video will be all of that kind of woodwork and trim going in, so uh, stay tuned and look out for that one. Uh, remember if you haven't headed over to our Facebook page, we've now started up a page there, so we'll kind of put all the videos and photos and all those sort of things on there and some updates, so that'll kind of tie it all together. Uh, and of course there's the blog as well, which is restorationcouple.com, and I'll put a link to that in the description box. Uh, but apart from that, thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself, and we'll see you next time. I prefer this aluminium pole because it doesn't bend at all, but it's a great big three meter. Thing.